back to another short video on Tony's tutorial and here we have today as our discussion the center edge angle the center edge angle is a topic that comes in the hip joint and let us explore what is center edge angle and what is its functional significance or clinical significance okay so the center edge angle is a measurement of the femoral head coverage by the acetabulum you know that the femur femoral head is covered by the acetabulum of course this is the femoral head and acetabulum covers it so it is a measurement of it is a measurement of femoral head coverage femoral head coverage by the acetabulum okay clear so it is a measurement of femoral head coverage by the acetabulum or it can be also a measurement of acetabular depth so the depth of the acetabular fossa or this depth of the acetabulum can be also measured from the center edge angle so it can be also a measurement of depth of acetabulum the depth of acetabulum so that is the center edge angle's significance so what is center edge angle it is a measurement or used for uh, finding out the femoral head coverage by the acetabulum also it is a measurement of depth of the acetabulum now what is femoral what is center edge angle let us see so center edge angle we know that it is an angle and how is it formed we need two lines to denote an angle to find out an answer angle the first one will be line joining the lateral margin of the acetabulum this is the lateral margin this is the medial margin so the line joining lateral margin of the acetabulum to the center of head of the femur what is that center so the reference points are center of head of femur okay center of head of femur and line joining lateral margin of acetabulum what is that not the medial margin lateral margin of acetabulum so if you draw a line from the lateral margin of acetabulum like this to the head of the femur okay center of the head of the femur so that is the first line what about the second line the second line is a vertical line drawn to the center of the head of the femur what is that again the center of the head of the femur itself is our uh, reference point or important landmark it is a vertical line drawn to the center of the head of the femur clear it is a vertical line like this drawn to the center of the head of the femur so two lines one is the line joining the lateral margin of the acetabulum with the center of the head of the femur and another line joining the center of the head of the femur or a vertical line passing through the center of the head of the femur so here it makes an angle that angle is known as the center edge angle center edge angle of course the word itself is explanatory if you, if you forget you can understand it center so the head of the femur will always be the center of the head of the femur don't write head of the femur it is a center point in the head of the femur and then edge the lateral edge denotes the edge of the acetabulum so edge of the acetabulum and the center of the head of the femur are the reference point or the lines of, uh, are the important points in this i understanding the center edge angle so center edge angle is an angle formed between a line joining the lateral margin of acetabulum to the center of the head of the femur to another line vertical line through the head of the femur center of the head of the femur so that is the uh, what that is the center edge angle clear okay that is a center edge angle now what is the normal value of center edge angle that is from 25 to 40 degree okay normal center edge angle for any individual can be, be between the ratio or a rate 25 to 40 degree if it is greater than 40 degree it shows a clinical condition known as femoroacetabular impingement we have a video on femoroacetabular impingement i think you have already listened to that that is the femoroacetabular impingement if not i will give the link above so it is femoroacetabular impingement so if this angle is greater than 40 degree it denotes a condition known as 
femoral acetabular impingement that too we have three type of impingement in that pincer impingement pincer impingement camp impingement and combined impingement okay so it denotes the pincer impingement what about it uh, being less than 25 degree so if it is less than 25 degree if it is less than 25 degree that shows acetabular dysplasia acetabular dysplasia here comes the question what is acetabular dysplasia acetabular dysplasia is a shallow acetabulum the acetabular curve or the concavity of that curve is not existing as normal it is a shallow than the normal so acetabular dysplasia is the shallow acetabulum in simple words so less than 25 means it is a acetabular dysplasia more correctly 16 to 25 it is a possible dysplasia possible dysplasia whereas less than 16 it is definite dysplasia okay definite acetabular dysplasia so the normal value is 25 to 40 degree what is that it is a 25 to 40 degree greater than 40 degree it shows a condition known as femoroacetabular impingement or impingement symptom uh, pincer impingement in particular and normal value if it is less than 25 it shows a acetabular dysplasia that too less than 16 it is definitely complete sure it is dysplasia and 16 20 25 it is a possible dysplasia so this is the normal value and abnormal measurements of the femoral sorry center edge angle clear okay now you can just imagine from the same thing okay for example we saw that this is the head of the femur and this is the normal angle okay so the normal angle 25 to what 40 degree okay 25 to 12, 40 degree now what happens in cam impingement or sorry pincer impingement the acetabulum fossa over covers this one okay it will protrude like this it will there will be an over covering so this will be the head of the femur so again we draw a straight line from the head of the femur to the lateral margin and a vertical line you can see that the angle increases greater than 25 degree so if there is an over covering as in cases of femoroacetabular impingement and pincer impingement there will be increase in the angle what about the acetabular dysplasia dysplasia means the acetabular becomes a shallow so it is a shallow acetabulum like this okay so again we have the head of the femur we draw two lines we see that it is is very a small one because this lateral edge will be far into the joint okay that will be very shallow so we have a very less value here we have normal value here we have a very abnormal value in case of femoroacetabular impingement okay so our uh, center edge angle is a measurement used to find out the femoral head coverage by the acetabulum it is also used to find out the acetabular depth in normal terms of femoroacetabular impingement center edge angle is drawn by Joy, line joining the lateral margin of the acetabulum to the center of the head of the femur and a line joining vertically and a line vertically joining the center of the head of the femur normal value is 25 to 40 greater than 40 femoroacetabular impingement pincer and less than 25 degree def, uh, dysplasia 60 less than 16 definite dysplasia 16 to 25 possible dysplasia now this measurement is also known as the lateral center edge angle what is known as lateral center edge angle we denote it as l c e a lateral center edge angle there is also one another center edge angle that is known as the anterior center edge angle anterior center edge angle denoted by a c e a what is that there are two type of center edge angle that can be measured one is the lateral center edge angle and another one is the anterior center edge angle so in anterior center edge angle here it is a lateral margin that will be the anterior margin of the acetabulum the possible anterior margin of the acetabulum so it will be the same thing you do not focus on that it will be the same thing it is the line joining the anterior margin of the acetabulum to the head of the femur center of the head of the femur and another one is the same vertical line to the center of the head of the femur so that is a difference between anterior center edge angle and lateral center edge angle no need to get confused the word itself explains that this is the lateral edge this is the anterior margin or anterior edge 
because it's all center edge angle always edge would be the center uh, femoral head will be the and it is an angle formed so lateral central edge angle and anterior center edge angle you need to remember okay so this angle is also known as center edge angle of uh, center edge angle of Weber. okay that is because this is a scientist this is the person who found out this is in, this in the 1939 so it can be called as center edge angle of Weber. so they may ask you in any terms and these measurements are very important in radiographic findings and with the help of radiograph findings we examine whether the patient is having dysplasia or femoroacetabular impingement whether it's a possible dysplasia or a mild uh, definite dysplasia or whether it is a pincer impingement okay these are one of the measurements that are used let us see some radiographic di uh, diagram for a clear understanding so here we can see the center edge angle the lateral central edge angle the measurement is seen usually in radiograph they draw a um, circle in the head of the femur to denote it and from the circle they expand that line to the lateral and the vertical line also this is the anterior center edge angle which can also be seen you can see that the circle is marked from that circle they uh, true draw two lines one to the vertical line and another to the anterior margin of the acetabulum and with that we wind up this session if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed